Okay, now can you hear me? Great. Okay, so I have to say seven minutes is a big challenge here. Um, so um, my name is Denise Dillard, and um, before I jump into um, kind of the uh, meat of my talk, I um, wanted to give a little bit of um, context of um, which informed how I and others work with the American Indian Alaska Native community um, and how I'm approaching um, uh, my talk about this phase of the research. Um, so a little bit about South Central Foundation. So South Central Foundation is an Alaska Native owned and operated tribal health system um, which took over provision of all of their primary care services from the Indian Health Service in about 1994. Um, SCF provides a wide range of mostly outpatient services to 60,000 American Indian Alaska Native people um, across a pretty wide um, geographical area. Um, 1,600 um, employees um, comprise the SCF workforce, of which 54% um, are Alaska Native themselves. So since taking over provision of their own health care, um, SCF has made very dramatic changes and the, what their care looks like now um, is very different in terms of if you visit the clinic. Um, but part of that change has really been very important changes in philosophy. So philosophy's underlying decisions made at SCF um, are that health is not only medical and individual, but it's holistic and it involves um, the family and it involves the whole community and it involves many multiple generations. Um, another key philosophical change is a change from the use of terminology of patients to customer owners um, since the system is owned um, by uh, the people that it serves. And, um, and this is important because it helps move uh, the population um, of Alaska Native people from being recipients of care to um, being in partnership um, and in charge of their own care um, with people providing um, services and with other systems, including the healthcare system. So, um, so how does this apply to um, research and citizen science? So um, although um, research has been going on with Alaska Native people for decades, um, much of the research that was done was done by people who were not Native and um, in a way which has um, been characterized as helicopter research where um, people flew into villages, collected their data, and then left, kind of never to be heard of again. And results were often never returned. Um, or they may be returned in a way which was either stigmatizing, so focusing on pathology, um, or in ways that there was um, actually damage to the community and the reputation like um, the Barrow alcohol study. Um, and this is a study where results um, about alcohol misuse in the community were reported on the front page of the New York Times before they were reported back to the community. And if you read that article, it describes the Alaska Native community as basically facing extinction um, because of high rates of alcohol use. Um, so all of this history, um, there's a resultant lack of trust in researchers, um, as well as federal entities that are charged with um, quote, protecting human subjects. Um, and this um, partly um, goes back to um, kind of ongoing um, issues related to um, treaty negotiations, those kinds of things with the federal government, but also research that has been done um, by entities like the Public Health Service where um, Alaska Native children in boarding schools where they were forced to attend were injected with radioactive iodine um, to take a look at the effects on thyroid cancer. So um, SCF, like um, other tribal entities, is increasingly um, taking over the oversight as well as the um, actual um, um, doing their own research. So SCF, um, since they took over their own health care, they started a tribal review and approval process um, where all research before it's published needs to be um, shared back with the community and with tribal leadership and they look very carefully at issues um, related to possibilities of community harm. Um, but SCF also in 2004 um, uh, created their own research department and this was done um, not only to um, you know ensure that commu the community is, is respected um, but also so that the corporation could um, 
in, engage in studies which they felt like really addressed what they wanted to study, not what NIH wants to fund or what individual researchers may be interested in. And so I am uh, the director of that, uh, the research department. I am also Alaska Native. I am a customer owner of the system. Um, and I'm also a researcher. So I wear many hats in this organization. So um, kind of moving on to um, uh, what should, after the study, kind of an important considerations. My focus today is really on kind of two big buckets. One is on developing and disseminating results. And um, active in involvement of um, participants or um, citizens or customer owners in developing um, and disseminating results is really important for a variety of reasons. One is to ensure that results are accurate and complete. And I can um, repeatedly learn that what I may be interested in from my vantage point is really different than what other people may be interested in. Uh, for instance, we did a study looking at what people thought about specimen banking, and people wanted a lot of information of, you know, what exactly are in the tubes, who works in the bank, do they get freezer burned? Those are things I never would have anticipated, but we made sure we included those in our results. Um, um, doing collaborative results creation and dissemination um, is respectful of the dignity of Alaska Native people rather than um, someone who should be disseminated to or educated to, and I, I mentioned the history of forced boarding school um, attendance. Um, this is using processes that don't um, repeat the harms of the past, um, and this can help build trust, kind of takes the blind off of what actually happens in research and makes it more transparent. It also helps to build capacity, um, which is another pen potential benefit for communities in terms of oversight and participation in other research activities, but also gaining skills in other areas. Um, areas of tension that we faced in this area um, are issues about if, when, and how to result, return results, as well as issues related to community confidentiality. Um, so, um, and I, somebody talked about this yesterday, we often, when we do genetic studies, um, we, our, the specimens are not associated with any identifiers, um, and analysis is typically done in research labs which are not CLIA certified. However, individuals really want to know their results. Um, and frankly, this, I, um, this um, when you tell people we can't return your results because they're not from a CLIA certified lab, um, that doesn't make sense. Um, to people. And so I know that we're, um, in our next set of efforts, we're going to be looking at the, this whole issue. Um, um, because, you know, researchers benefit from knowledge all the time, so why can't Alaska Native people or participants also benefit from that knowledge, even if we don't know the full implications of, of that? Um, how to best return results in a way which is meaningful and which um, is done in a way that um, is done in plain language. You know, some of the, uh, this is very time consuming and oftentimes it happens at the end of studies which are already insufficiently funded, often kind of uh, uh, beyond the, the rate of the, fund, the uh, funded period and so um, those efforts need to be supported. Um, and then there's also ethical and social issues related to uh, communities. So, um, you know, communities can be harmed if they're identified in research. But um, in our work, some communities want to be um, want to be named because they're proud of the work that they've done. Um, but you know, how do we go about making that decision? Um, and then I, I also do want to say real quickly here um, a couple other things is that um, I want to reiterate that scientific publications are important. Um, if you talk to community members in Alaska, they feel like there's been all this research in Alaska, but there's very few um, published studies. So where are those studies? Getting that information out there so researchers aren't returning over and over again to study the same things. Um, and it also helps set up, set up the stage for um, future action. And um, so in terms of action, I think um, paying attention to what are the potential policy implications of the findings, um, what are clinical practices or procedures that need to be changed. I get asked that for every single study that we do, um, and we take that um, very seriously. Um, and, um, and this does not mean that research um, has to result in some sort of change, but I think to be very upfront, um, that, you know, this may just be knowledge generating, um, but um, what are the potential future steps which could, um, which could uh, lead to actual change? 
Um, and then my last point is really in terms of data ownership and ongoing use of um, data. Um, SCF has um, taken the stand that they own and um, govern all future use of data. Um, so there's kind of the tri tribal oversight. Um, but then also for us with um, use of genetic information or biological specimens, we have also taken the stance that um, we go back to individuals each and every time. Um, because individual Alaska Native individuals may not necessarily uh, make the same decisions as what tribal leadership um, may make. Thank you.